Hello, welcome back. Um, today we're going to talk about soil. Now, um, let's see, yesterday we talked about weathering and erosion. Uh, weathering, of course, the delithification, the breaking down of rock. Erosion, the movement of that material from one place to another. Um, but today we're going to be talking about soil, a result of weathering. Um, one of our greatest natural resources, one that a lot of people don't give a lot of thought to, but is really something that we have to take care of because it is our connection. It is our connection to the planet. Um, not just us, but all animals, definitely. Um, you could argue all living things, um, plants and animals. So um, today we're going to be looking at soil, um, a result of all that weathering of rock and um, how it connects us, how it connects lots of the different systems that we've been talking about, um, all of those systems actually. So we're going to look at how soil forms. Uh, we're going to look at some, some some specifics about soil, um, including factors that influence its formation, um, because all soil is, you know, really different. There's thousands, literally thousands of different types. Uh, but what are some factors that influence it? Um, what are some of its primary components? Um, how is it representative of Earth systems? And uh, we'll start to a little bit talk about uh, groundwater and how the movement of water moves through soils and we'll do that at the very end. All right, so let's get to it. So some people call it dirt, but it's soil. Um, I always think of dirt as dirty, nasty. Mm. Soil is extremely important. Um, basically soil is made of loose weathered material and organic matter. Um, so kind of all together. And that is not something that's dirty or nasty. That is our umbilical cord to the planet, um, to the sun, actually. Uh, it is how we get nutrients, how we get energy from the sun into us and into lots of animals, almost all animals, uh, and definitely plants. So there's three primary types of rock material in soil, um, and you could argue four with gravel, but uh, they're really based on size. There's sand size, which is about a millimeter in diameter. Um, silt size, which is, you can see the comparison there, it's really just one pixel, and that's not even to scale. Um, silt, very fine. And then finally, clay. Clay is extremely tiny, um, invisible at that scale. So they're based on size, uh, and that's just the rock material. So gravel, sand, you know what sand is, and then silt, really small, and then the finest and smallest are clays. Um, here you'll see a picture of um, clay minerals up under an electron scanning microscope. Um, you can see it's kind of flaky looking. Uh, remember we were talking about feldspar yesterday or in the previous class, um, how it gets weathered and broken down very quickly um, and can form clays. And so here is uh, a nice zoomed in image. So you notice that they are flake like and they're kind of stacked on top of each other. Um, also, these clays are electrostatically charged, uh, which is one reason why they really stick into your clothes, um, but they also act like a magnet and attract and hold plant nutrients, which is very good. Now soil, this is just an average. Soil on average consists of about 45% mineral, 25% water, 25% air, and 5% organic matter. Again, that's just an average. Um, Every soil is different, so, uh, but on average, about 45 uh, mineral, 5% organic, that's about half, and that's all the solid material, and then 25% air, 25% water, which are, of course, liquids and gas. Um, here's a nice little graph for you to kind of put it all together. What do you recognize here? See something that looks like systems? Geosphere, atmosphere, biosphere. Hydrosphere. We have all four components. Um, soil is really its own universe, its own little microcosm, um, and there's so much activity going on right up under, you know, our feet. Um, but it is really representative of every Earth system. Again, there's different soils throughout the world, um, thousands of different types, um, but they're all influenced by the five five primary things um, that. Uh, contribute to how they develop. So let's take a look at those five big factors for that influence the development of soil. Uh, the first one is parent material. This refers to the minerals, organic materials present during soil's formation. Um, and it makes sense. Think about um, 
an island uh, that was created through oceanic oceanic collision, subduction, um, a volcanic island that erupted. Its material is going to be very different than the material that was created um, uh, through mount, plate tectonic mountain building, continental continental collision. It's going to be quite different there. Um, it's going to be different in a Hawaiian island in a volcanic oceanic hotspot versus a continental hotspot. Um, Silicate material is going to be different. The rock's going to be different. So the parent material for the soil, the mineral content is going to be different based on whatever that rock material is. So again, materials from volcanoes, sediment that's been transported uh, by wind, water, glaciers, all influence that parent material. Think about our soils. Where do you think our parent material came from? If you really think about it, Remember the five physiographic regions? Our parent material is mainly marine sediment, um, ocean in origin, or produced by river and stream um, action, erosion, and transportation of that material from the Blue Ridge and Piedmont and deposited here. So our parent material is influenced by all of those factors. The next one. The big influencing factor is climate. Climate of a particular region can have a huge influence on the rate of soil formation and that type of soil. Um, think about a tundra, which is you know soil that's frozen year round versus um, in a, a tropical region. Um, think about that tropical region versus um, that doesn't really have seasons as warm year round versus a deciduous forest. Um, so those climates are really going to influence that soil formation. Um, remember back to weathering. Climate has its own part to play in weathering. So um, those cycles of freezing and thawing, the wetting and drying, they all vary with region with, by climate. So um, that's going to have a huge impact on how soils form. Living things. So remember there's organic matter in soil. Um, so both Plants and animals help create that soil. So as those organisms die, that organic matter incorporates with weathered parent material and becomes part of the soil. So um, as plants and animals, they die, um, they're decomposed, they're broken down, that becomes part of the soil. What are some organisms that you can think of that might help enrich soil? Well, there's lots. I know you probably automatically think of um, fungus, mushrooms, um, but there's lots more. There's moles uh, or any burrowing creature. Remember, they can help weather stuff, uh, but those actions of moles, earthworms, um, saprophytic organisms like bacteria and fungi, which help break down organic material, roundworms, uh, those weird, very ancient organisms um, that are like even far behind the evolutionary scale of earthworms, um, but they, all those organisms help break down and enrich the soil. The next one is topography. The slope or hilliness of a region can have a huge influence on soil, um, including moisture and erosion rates. So think about a hilly region where the water is mostly going to drain out and away versus a flat region um, that's going to hold that moisture. Um, so topography has a huge part to play. So in many regions, moist, poorly drained soils are, of course, located in low-lying areas, whereas in much higher areas, it's just going to drain away, um, often found on hillsides. Erosion is a real big problem um, because it can lead to a loss of topsoil. If you lose the topsoil, the soil loses its ability, loses its ability to sustain life. So in this graphic, you can see like a, a mountain is going to have almost no topsoil, if any. It's going to be exposed bedrock. Um, as you move down slope, the you'll have patchier soils um, that drain very rapidly. It could be very thin topsoil. Down in a valley, where all that water drains into, it could be very thick, very moist soils. And then if you have um, uh, like a plateau. Um, the water can drain very rapidly, um, but you could also have very thick soil. So it could be dry, but have this and have this region where the water just goes straight through. So again, topography has a huge part to play in soil formation. 
time. Soil is almost a non-renewable resource because it takes hundreds of years just to form one inch of soil from parent material, hundreds of years. Um, so if we lose that soil, if we lose that topsoil by um, over farming, by um, tilling and then weathering and erosion, wind, water, whatever, move that soil away, it's irreplaceable, at least in the short term. Um, remember only the top few centimeters of soil are actually productive and able to sustain growth. So once that's gone, hundreds of years to form. This is why soil conservation is so important. So in this graphic, um, this shows the progression of soil formation. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of a theory, uh, the theory of faunal succession, which talks about how pioneer species moves into a place where there's you know, almost no plants. Um, think about you know, Hawaii, it's creating extra real estate with uh, nice basaltic lava flow type eruptions. How does that go from rock to sustainable soil uh, or soil that can sustain life? So it works basically like this. So we start with the bedrock um, that is weathered, broken down. Um, over time, we have those pioneer species, those species that can uh, start to grow in the cracks in the rock, um, start cracking the rock with their roots, um, things like lichen uh, that can attach to those rocks um, and help break it down. So we start to have the parent material form as that rock is broken down. Over time, more species can move in. Um, after those pioneer species live, they die, they start to break down, they start to form uh, more rich soils. And so then you'll start to have a layer of organic matter on top, um, whereas, and the parent material is continually being broken down by root action. Maybe animals have moved in uh, to help along with that process. And then finally, hundreds of years later, now we have some pretty thick organic uh layers at the top mixed in with lots of minerals from the parent material and it's able to sustain uh, much larger plants and then more animals and so on and so forth so you're moving from uh pure bedrock that is weathered and broken down into a sustainable soil so let's look at um the profile of soil uh like a cross section or the components of soil the layers of soil so let's take a look at each one of these. Um, I'm gonna show you some, a very simple one, four parts. Um, there are others as well. This gets really complicated. Soil scientists you know, spend lots of time looking at all these different layers and how minerals and water and nutrients and air kind of move through, how this material is broken down. Um, so we're gonna just kind of go with the main horizons or layers of soil. So we'll start with the O layer. The O layer is easy, organic. Um, it consists of leaf litter and organic material kind of lying on the surface of the soil. Not a lot of mineral content here. It's almost all decaying matter. Um, lots of organic material. But the A horizon, the topsoil, that's really the one we have to focus conservation efforts on because that is what sustains growth. So um, that topsoil, that's where we get our 5% organic matter, 45% mineral content. Um, it's usually loose and crumbly, has organic matter and lots of mineral content. This is the most productive layer, and that's why um, conservation efforts are really focused on that A layer. Then we get to the B layer. The B layer is usually a lighter color. If you've ever been digging in your backyard, you may have gotten through that dark part and then um you get through the leaf litter and then you have this dark part and then you get down to this lighter part so that lighter part doesn't have as much organic materials very low in organic matter but it's really high in mineral content um this is the area where water kind of percolates down through um and we get to our sea layer which is really the parent material so the sea or transition layer almost no organic material here. Um, it's not able to sustain plant growth. Um, there's no bacteria, very little bacteria there that can take those mineral nutrients and put them in a form to where a plant can absorb them. Um, so almost completely devoid of uh, organic matter, but lots of parent material, broken weathered parent material. 
below that is the rock, the, the actual bedrock, um, the unweathered rock. All right, so those are your four main layers. Um, just take a brief glimpse into a couple of words that are gonna become really important when we talk about groundwater in our next section. There's two words, porosity, permeability. Porosity is how much space you have around sediment particles, and it's really a factor of particle size. Um, you think about a jumble of gravel or a bunch of sand. Uh, how much space is in between each of those particles? That's porosity, pores, open spaces. Permeability is based on porosity, um, but permeability is how easily water can trickle down or flow through. So if you think of uh, like gravel, you pour water and it comes almost immediately through. A bunch of sand, you pour water, it takes a little bit longer. Um, silt, clays, very, very slow. So again, permeability, how quickly water can move through, and it's really based on particle size. All right. So in this graphic, I just wanted to share with you um, the breakdown of the different horizons, um, the O layer, the organic layer, the topsoil, this E transition zone, I didn't have it on the other slide, but the transition zone is just that um, transition from the heavily organic A layer to that very low um, organic B layer, which is just really weathered, um, weathered bedrock subsoil is what it's called. Um, didn't really talk about it there, but it's just a transition zone. Some soils have a really big transition zone. Some soils have very small. And so you can see in this actual cutaway, the O layer sitting right on top, the top soil, the A layer, here's this E transition zone. You can see it's slightly lighter. Then we have the subsoil, the B layer, and then down here, the actual uh, weathered bedrock into the C layer. All right. So I have this soil concept map. Um, for this, I just want you to have a look at it. Um, and you can see here we have soil in the middle. We have the biosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere. Um, and then, of course, the geosphere is over on this other side where you see weathering, physical and chemical uh, of rocks and minerals. And then I have some of these other factors in here like time, conservation, erosion, salinization, which refers to salt. Um, and then the types of soil. Um, particle size, of course, leads to porosity, sand, silt, clays. The chemistry of the soil, um, the cation exchange, uh, and then the different horizons. So uh, what I would like for you to do is just take about 10 minutes. There is a video here on soil uh, where he really goes into that concept map and really breaks it down. Um, you can just use this as reinforcement. All right. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, please let me know.